What is going on, everybody? Happy Friday. We uh, will get started here in just a minute. I'm going to send out a tweet, let people know that we're starting to take, up, take off here. Hope everyone's having a relaxing and great start to their Friday. Or if you're overseas, hope you're having, you had a good Friday and are winding down now. We have a, a new moderator today uh, leading, leading the questions and uh, facilitating. Um, JP, are you here? Hey, Jake. Looking for <laughs> JP, how's it going? Not too bad. How's everybody doing today? Doing great. Happy Friday. How are you doing today? Well, I, I'm actually doing a lot better now that I realized that my audio wasn't set right. So I was sitting in a silent office hours room wondering why we hadn't started yet. Oh, no. Well, community, JP just joined our team uh, this week as a community rep, and uh, he helped us with the giveaway and, and the stream last night. So stepping in immediately and adding value and uh, excited. He, he's been a part of the various Dapper Labs communities dating back to the Crypto Kitties days. So to have him as a, a part of our team now is ultra exciting. And uh, um, he really understands this community better than pretty much anyone else. So um, JP, really excited to have you kind of hosting today with us and uh, looking forward to diving into some questions. Well, I, I appreciate the introduction. I will say as a true Canadian, I uh, I struggle with uh, taking compliments, but I will say thank you for the uh, for the nice words. <laughs> Ready to hop right in? Ready to hop right in. I'm just okay. sent out a tweet letting people know that we're getting started, and uh, let's get down to business. Awesome. Well, let's start things off with a softball. I've got a I've got a bunch of questions lined up from Discord. How about an update from from you, Jacob, and from the team about the progress on this week's pack drop? How's the pre-registration been going? Or the pre-registration drop been going, I should say. It's been going great. Uh, we had just about 300,000 collectors pre-register for a pack. Um, we are getting very, so we, we've got, what, another seven hours or so until the queue closes. Um, but my hope is that that, that means 250,000 to 300,000 collectors are going to get a pack this week, many of whom are getting their first pack. Um, we've done a really nice job of syncing with our compliance team to make sure that botters and scammers are not getting these packs. So I think long term, we might even be seeing a pre-registration uh, system on a weekly basis. Um, how does that sound community? Getting a, a pack every week if you uh, pre-register. So that, that might be something that comes sooner rather than later. I can't guarantee it to be an every week thing, but from my understanding, we might try to do another one of these as soon as next week. So certainly starting the wheels in motion. And what we really think is gonna be valuable about this is giving our uh, new collectors an opportunity to get in. Um, and you know, the intention of Top Shot from day one has been to get common moments into the hands of collectors pretty readily. Um, so I, I think you can safely anticipate that we're gonna have this coming um, more frequently, and we're really satisfied so far. Now, now, granted, we're still in maybe only the the seventh inning, so to speak, of where we're going to be on the pre-registration. We still have to close it. We still have to to um, ensure that there were um, no flaws at the end of the day today. But the way I see it is, we are in really good position to take this concept and run with it long term. That's amazing. I think it was really well received for sure. And the, uh, you know, the, the number of features that we kept open uh, during the entire window, I think was probably one of the biggest, uh, biggest benefits for sure. Uh, moving on. So I have a question here and it's possibly my favorite question that I've come across uh, in Discord so far. It's from a Discord user called the 52. 
Uh, and he's trying a new approach on us, which uh, I'll just read it here. It says, I've heard that reverse psychology is sometimes used to get answers from people. He doesn't believe it works, though. And he also doesn't believe that the Eastern Conference Finals and Western Con Conference Finals moments are ever going to get burned or otherwise. I think he's looking for other options as well. Uh, he definitely can't see how they won't be burned. Um, he's asking if we agree and... Uh, and if not, maybe what we think is going to happen. I think I think I know where that question's trying to lead us to. So I'll turn it over to you with that. Yeah, I uh, a lot of words for a simple question of what's the latest with Eastern Conference Western or Eastern and Western Conference Finals moments from last year. I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, JP. But the, the... Right. I I just wanted to give him credit for creativity. Cool. Um, yeah, no update there. Uh, it's still on our docket to do at some point. Um, I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat, and I know uh, not to spoil uh, your your lead here, JP, but I, I figure we we're going to get to Series 1 reserve packs at some point. I can confirm we will be announcing that at some point today. So stay glued to Discord, stay glued to twitter um and make sure that you're, you're tuning in we will announce it at some point today we've looked at the series one um moments that we've had in our in our account as the more urgent priority between that and burning western conference and eastern conference finals packs for, or moments from last year so series one coming out later today um Y'all have to you'll have to stay tuned for what that looks like. That's great. The I, I think a nice uh, easy follow up question to that that hasn't been asked as many times, but I know it's been observed that the series two release twenty seven packs were skipped. Is there any news on that? Yeah, we'll go back to we'll go back to those packs at some point. Um, basically, what happened was. We created a, a queue for the hollow icon drop two, and we had about 80,000 collectors or so in that queue. And to ensure that everyone had access, we created a system in which we had to create a new release with 80,000 packs to make sure everyone could get a rebound pack. Um, so we skipped over 27, went to 28, where we had 83,000 or so packs in there. And then, um, you know, we just haven't gotten back to the 50,000 packs that are in release 27. But that will happen. Um, I'm seeing some comments in the office hours chat. So just to, just to clarify, there will not be a pack drop today. Um, there will not be a pack drop today. Uh, there will be an announcement about what we're doing with the Series 1 moments, and some of those moments may be uh, you know, included in, in packs, but uh, that is all for down the road and not for right now. Cool. Thanks for that. A uh, number of questions have come in around the Cool Cats challenge progress and more specifically about, I guess, the remaining moments that haven't yet been released or distributed. Any comments on that and, uh, I guess, updates uh, that you can share? Yeah, with Cool Cats, we're still kind of trudging along. Um, we had another challenge go live yesterday. Uh, the theme of, just to clarify to the community of, of what we were trying to do there, uh, the moments required for that Zach Levine are all alley-oops. So the concept was alley-cat, so to speak. Um, and yeah, that, that's just to, to set the record straight on why we chose those moments. Um, we don't have any kind of new updates around Master Challenge. Uh, we will keep you posted as soon as we do, um, but not quite ready to, to announce that yet. Excellent. Okay, I think we're going to get into some uh, some good meaty questions now. So one of the Discord users, uh, Imperial March, 
basically brings up something that a lot of people have been talking about recently, and that's the purchase issues, failed transactions, and uh, and primarily the impact. I know we've talked about it in previous office hours about the fact that a failed transaction still triggers the 30 minute timer. Is there anything that you can sh share about uh, uh, anything that might be being looked at or progress on, I'll, I'll call it a fix or whatever might be done to try to make it more of a positive experience in the event that somebody doesn't, isn't able to purchase successfully the first time. Yeah. What I can say with certainty is that it's a priority for our team to look into and, and figure out a better system long-term. I don't have a timeline for it, but um, I certainly get a lot of DMS and ads on Twitter about it. So I know how uh, pervasive it is. What I can say with certainty is that there are instances where your cooldown might say 30 minutes, but if you wait 10 minutes and you refresh, um, you'll be eligible and able to, to share. So um, keep that in mind. Um, and when it comes to other things, when it comes to you know just generally having transactions blocked, um, there are a few things that might trigger that. Um, using a VPN, uh, using uh, a credit card that um, isn't your own, um, logging in from many destinations all over the US or internationally. Um, and these are all measures that we've taken to uh, curtail bots and, and bad actors on the platform. Now, of course, we're going to have some false positives and we're looking into a way to diminish the number of false positives. We know that it's a pain point in the community. Um, but, you know, I, I think to our credit, we've proven to be pretty receptive and, and fast acting to, to alleviate um, collectors' biggest concerns. So that will be um, one of the next priorities we tackle. Um, and it's increasingly kind of uh, been made aware to our team. There's a related question um, that's been raised and it, it comes back to, you know, it probably gets most attention during the announcement of new challenges, but obviously when a new challenge is released, there's a you know large number of uh, attempts at purchasing moment that are in that challenge. Um, is there anything being looked at about another mechanic that might be used to, to get us away from potentially first come first serve and the problems that go with that? Or is this something that is likely gonna remain in place? We're looking into it. Um, not likely to remain in place long-term. We're gonna try to figure out ways to improve it. Um, Details on that I'll have to remain mum for now, just because we're still in very much the exploratory uh, days of what, what that could look like longer term. One final question on marketplace and challenges. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, obviously collectors are generally split on most concerns, but this one is there's been calls to temporarily close the marketplace during the point in time when I, or at the point in time when a challenge is announced, it's, uh, you know, people say that it creates a slightly less than ideal experience for the purchasers, possibly for, uh, for marketplace sellers as well. Is there anything that you can comment about with, you know, with respect to potentially changing what we do with the marketplace during announcements of challenges? What I can say with certainty is We've had the conversations and what our experts on the kind of engineering side of our operation have concluded is that turning off the marketplace to kind of release a challenge will be far worse for the consumer and the collector experience once we reopen up the marketplace because it's going to be a mad dash for the same moments and it's going to create even more frustrating experiences that might actually overwhelm the system and force our engineers to take time away from building great features like the pre-registration and work on kind of recovering the site. So right now we wanna really prioritize um, 
doing things that add value and, and features that make the experience even better. Um, and as a result, we have to live with maybe uh, imperfect positioning around challenges and, and releasing challenges when the marketplace is up is the fairest. And uh, it's not perfect by any means, but it, it creates a slightly less risky um, performance experience that won't crash the site. Yeah, absolutely fair. The, uh, you know, out of, out of the norm, you know, I'm, we, we, we're getting a lot of questions these days about, about packs. I, you know, it's, it's a bit surprising. <laughs> um, and people have, have noticed, and I think you've commented in a few different, a uh, few different areas about a, a pack drop that, seems to be referred to as hustle and flow. What can you tell us? Yeah, so it's actually called hustle and show. Oh, um, my bad, <laughs> sorry. Hustle, hustle and flow, uh, a good movie from the mid 2000s. And that was actually the inspiration for this name, hustle and show. Um, and what we're gonna see are some packs released that are emphasizing hustle and some packs that are released that emphasize flashiness and show showmanship. Um, so you can you can think, uh, you know, when we're talking about the hustle plays, hustle players, um, you can think about like Marcus Smart or Rudy Gobert as, as maybe some guys that will emerge in the, the hustle kind of component. Whereas on the show side of things. Um, I'm going to remain a little mum, um, but I think the community can put uh, two and two together and think about some of the flashier players in the league that might appear in the, the kind of show side of the, the experience. So, you know, from that, I would I would think about, mm, you know, maybe the, the nicest crossovers, the nicest finishes at the rim, uh, some some really great, you know, moves off the dribble. Um, we'll see what the show side looks like as we get closer to it. Um, but with hustle for sure, um, I, I can I can say with confidence that we've got Marcus Smart and we've got Rudy Gobert and, and stay tuned because there might be more names coming through uh, very shortly. Um, but yeah, we're, we're looking at dropping those packs at some point next week. Um, we're excited about it and um just overall i think like all right so i'm getting some names uh in real time here uh alex caruso is gonna have a hustle moment colin sexton's gonna have a hustle moment there will be a couple of rookies that get hustle moments um including a rookie that hasn't yet made their top shot or it hasn't yet appeared um it's all in the theme of hustle plays. It's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely looking forward to that. Do you uh, do you want to use that as a springboard to talk about other packs that uh, may have been mentioned or previously alluded to over the last couple office hours too? Sure. Yeah, the next rare pack we drop is going to be Throwdowns. No timeline on it. You can expect it coming soonish. Um, I would say in the next two weeks, probably, um, and potentially even sooner. Um, and that's going to be some of the best dunks from the NBA season. Um, so we're really looking forward to that one as well. Do you have any um, uh, anything you can tease about how big the addition size will be for those? No, no, no teasing today. Uh, but we will give you those updates when we have them. Excellent. Any uh, any legendary tips, hints? Yeah, what what we're looking at with legendary is we're gonna have at least two more legendary drops this season. Uh, one being a hollow icon drop three, which we've talked about, um, and that will happen for sure. And then one around the NBA playoffs. Um, no telling when or or what it will cover, um, but it's going to include playoff moments. And then 
I've said it before, I'll, I'll keep saying it. We're about 50 50 on it. And, and honestly, I'd even say maybe 45% chance it happens, 55% chance it doesn't happen, just to temper expectations um, about a legendary rookie drop. There's a chance it happens for sure, but we're not. We're not in a position to say it with confidence. Um, there will absolutely be common playoff packs as well. I see that question coming up. Um, there will be common moments from the playoffs that we'll be releasing in the playoffs. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, playoffs are going to be a be an amazing time for sure. Um, I think the uh, maybe the next thing we can talk about is the Certified Baller Showcase Contest. Yeah, um, we've got just under a week left uh, until we're going to pull the, the most light showcases and, and start sending out some rewards. Um, so very excited for that. Um, congratulations to all collectors here that have put together a showcase and have, uh, you know, gotten their 20 likes or 20 fire emojis on their on their showcase on top shot if you haven't yet um, keep sharing it keep trying to get people um to like it what I'll, I'll caveat that by saying the way to do that is not by spamming people in chat dms on discord um that's you know a frustrating experience for everyone and uh we're instituting a I guess, I guess we want to discourage that. So don't don't spam people in Discord via DMs with your showcase asking for people to like it. Um, but yeah, it, we're, we're coming down to the wire. Um, anyone that's able to get 20 plus likes on their showcase will we'll make sure that uh, bad actors are not rewarded. Um, and those who made multiple showcases, they'll get... Uh, only one of their showcases uh, rewarded, but the top 50 most liked showcases that are eligible will get an early adopters pack. The top 10 most liked showcases that are eligible will get a rising stars pack. And among the top 10, we'll have our team uh, choose our three favorite showcases and each of them will receive a hollow icon pack now, what I can say with confidence, in case this is a concern in the community, is if an NBA player or uh, a referee in our Discord uh, is in the top 50, we'll extend that list to 51, 52, however long it goes. We want to reward collectors. We don't want to, um, you know, if a player put together a showcase and got a ton of likes, it's not their fault and we're not going to um, exclude them from the reward but we'll just make it a, a larger reward for everyone else. I know we saw three, uh, three player showcases getting created last night on stream. I was curious to see if Cole, uh, Cole Anthony's showcase or T Ross's was going to be in the running. So it's interesting. You'd comment on that. Uh, I do know um, if anybody watched the stream, uh, there was probably the best celebration extended dance done by Cole Anthony. So if you have an opportunity to to walk, to go back and watch the stream, that's definitely worth checking out. We're uh, we're we're definitely going to have to look into having that one minted, right, Jacob? Absolutely. And community, I'd love some feedback. Uh, how did we feel about kind of this concept of showcase contest live? Did we enjoy it? Do we think that we're going to would y'all like to see us continue to do more of those? maybe diversify the types of streams we do, uh, some being uh, drops, or sorry, some being pack openings and giveaways, some being showcase contest lives. Um, all of it you know, is a fair game for the future. And we're going to continue to get creative about ways that we can work with players um, and get them to continuously enjoy Top Shot uh, you know, front and center. Um, yeah, and, and thanks, Veerman, for sharing the <laughs> Cole Anthony dance. It goes on for a while. It's great. Okay, um, you want to switch into a little bit of a speed round? Let's. Uh, so here's here's a couple quick questions that should be fairly short answers. Any plans on doing challenges that are short in duration, like 24 hours? And the follow up to that one is for some reason. 
or for the staff to get tiger tattoos? So you can pick either of those two questions. Uh, consideration for 24 hour challenges. Um, you know, I think long term it's on the table. I think it, it is a lot of work for our team. Did and my connection drop, Jacob, or are you still there? I'm here. Uh, can you all hear me? You can now. There was no, there was silence after my question. Oh no. Okay. Um, yeah. On the, on the topic of twenty four hour challenges, um, I think it's on the table long term, but it is quite an endeavor for our team to do even a, a one week or a two week challenge with a lot of stakeholders uh, doing a lot of things. So making twenty four hour challenges something that I'd be open to and and will explore long term, but certainly. Um, at our current scale of a team of, I'd say about 130 employees, um, most of whom are engineers and most of whom are not on kind of the, the live ops or community or content side of things, uh, we don't quite have uh, the ability to do it yet. Another question would be, is there any planned utility on the future, yeah, so for, call it the roadmap, um, for low serial numbers besides just collectability? If you need me to repeat the question, I know I got crossed up in the middle of it. Any future utility besides collectability? Well, I think the most obvious uh, thing that we're, we're excited about and building and working toward is hardcore, right? Our mobile game where the moments from your collection will help level up your, your, your players and your team in the mobile game. So we're really excited about that. Um, beyond that, I, I think the the bounds there there are no upper bounds here. There, are, it's a limitless potential of utility. Uh, we look at Top Shot long term as kind of a currency of NBA fandom. To prove you're a big fan, you need to build up your collection. Perhaps you go into an arena one day, and there might be a kiosk, or there might be a a, a a scannable barcode that helps you redeem new moments and, and gets you concessions or whatever, right? We, we would need to figure all of that out and that's for well down the road. Um, but I, I'm excited about all of the different utilities. And I, I really think that when we look at Top Shot, um, we've proven that the, there's a lot of excitement around just buying, selling and, and collecting in the marketplace. But as we add more layers of utility to the experience long term, um, I think there's no telling what could happen. Um, there's potential to have chat rooms in our Discord that to gain access, you need to have certain moment requirements. And in those chats, maybe we bring on NBA players to chat with you all. Um, there's a ton that we can potentially do. Um, so. Just some ideas. None of that, to be very clear, is, is confirmed or on the table right now. But it, it, as we're thinking aspirationally about what we can do um, over the years, we're really uh, excited. And, and um, if the question was low serial number utility, that I think we'll, we'll have to figure out. Um, but it's a good question. We haven't yet kind of done any scoping of what low serial number added utility could look like quite yet. Yeah, so one, one update that I saw a little bit earlier in the chat, might as well address here, is the question about Canadian bank withdrawals and UK bank withdrawals. Um, I checked with our engineers on the Dapper side just this morning to, to get the latest, and we're in QA for it, so uh, making sure that it works well. And in our QA process, we did notice um, a bug with a third party uh, partner. Um, so we're scoping that bug and, and trying to solve it. What I would say with confidence is that we're in the red zone. Um, that's a football term for, for those who are not NFL fans like Cole Anthony last night. We're in the red zone, meaning we're very close. Uh, I would say a couple more weeks probably. Um, and this is why we QA. Um, we, we theoretically could roll it out within the next week, but we know it would lead to a lot of frustrating uh, uh, collector experiences being, you know, not ideal. So what we want to do long term is when we roll this out, ensure that it's rolled out well and, and leads to a very positive experience for, for you all. 
I don't know if uh, any of the question that I was asking um, before Discord dropped out on me was uh, came through, but uh, there's some questions around baller status uh, and the other uh, topic that's been previously talked about related to like a collector score. Can you talk a little bit about where that where those might be at? Yeah, um, we're we're increasingly confident about. Uh, a concept like a collector score that moves dynamically up and down based on how your collection is looking. So if you sell, it goes down. If you buy, it goes up. Um, no timeline for it, but we look at that long term as a way for us to have a very kind of clear defined heuristic that will, will give our community full visibility into uh, where they stand, whether they'll be eligible for drops, we'll be able to create kind of eligibility restrictions that are are in the theme of if your collector score is X or higher, you'll be eligible for this drop rather than you need to own 15 moments or one legendary or two rares or, or things like that. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, that will be happening at some point, and uh, we think that that will, you know, solve a lot of the questions, concerns about how we define a true collector on Top Shot. Um, and I think the phrasing on that's always been a little crude or potentially unfair, because um, you all are true collectors. If you're showing up to an office hours, you're a true collector. But we do have to create thresholds, right? Because if we have a legendary drop, and we open it up to Everyone in the community, we make ourselves very susceptible to bots and, and bad actors getting involved, uh, rent seekers. Um, so creating thresholds is important. Obviously, we have 80,000 people in a legendary drop. The, per the person who was the nearest to eligibility that wasn't eligible is going to be salty and upset. But we, we have to kind of maintain uh, a strong perspective on it. Thanks. Thanks for that, Jacob. I'm just scanning through some of the other questions that I've got here. Uh, one one collector asked, just wondering if there's anything special uh, with holding on to a challenge reward that you were uh, that you earned, like a uh, Durant or you know uh, Fred Van Leet, for example, from yesterday, which is one of the best, almost impossible threes um, that have been made. Um, question really comes down to he wants to trade up for a better cereal but doesn't want to lose out on anything down the road yeah um i appreciate the question I, i'm unfortunately not in a position to give you advice on that um to my knowledge i don't think we're going to be retroactively doing anything to reward you beyond the the reward itself for moments that you've collected long term we're thinking of ways to make uh, the re release of challenge rewards to the collectors that complete a challenge is more interesting, be it they're coming in the form of a pack or we give you a an opportunity we, we give you kind of more celebration around completing the challenge in our communication to you. Um, but nothing of monetary value that will be exchangeable on the marketplace. That's my knowledge at this point. Perfect. Um Let's see here. Now, what, I know one of the most exciting things is just seeing how quickly the community grows. So I know there might be some perspective that some of these questions have been asked before, but maybe they're worth touching again from time to time. So um, <laughs> will we ever see any cool packs like flagrant foul packs or technical foul packs? Um, it's possible, uh, potentially down the road, but unlikely, I would say. I mean, you know, as a Knicks fan, I, I kind of think about like uh, this is a deep cut for for maybe some of you here, but when Marty Collins uh, and J.R. Smith got into a fight uh, years ago, before Carmelo and J.R. Smith were on the Knicks, and Carmelo kind of had a sucker punch in there against Marty Collins, like things like that would be, you know, just funny, great historic moments from the NBA history, but uh, also with full cognizance that um, those are not moments that the NBA nor the PA are particularly proud of. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be making moments around them. Um, understandable. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a question that does come up from time to time. People like the entertaining things as much as the exciting moments for sure. But uh, lots of lots of good reasons why they may or may not ever uh, you know, be released for sure. I guess related question might be uh, most collectors are, are very familiar with the run it backpacks and there's been, you know, some talk about it, you know, in the not too recent or not too distant past. Questions come up from time to time about any chance of any really like much older run it back style packs names, you know, the, the, the names that we all probably would love to see uh, probably don't even need to name them, but you know, MJ and some old Vin. Yeah. Um, I would say it, we're looking into it and our hope is that one day we can get all of the best players, all of the best moments from NBA history on our, on our platform. Uh, no timeline there. Um, but I do definitely think that, you know, we'll look into our licensing rights and, and, and find the players that we can add to top shot in the, in the most efficient way possible. Um, and when we do run it back sets, our, our prerogative is really to kind of tell the narrative of that season, right? So, um, when we look at the run it back set we rolled out from 2013 to 14, we got a lot of questions about, well, why did you make Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce and Steve Nash's first moments on kind of teams that they were not best remembered for? And, you know, the reality is if you were a fan at, in the 2013 14 season, you best believe that Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett joining the Brooklyn Nets coached by Jason Kidd with Brooke Lopez, Darren Williams, and Joe Johnson, and Andre Kirilenko. That was like the story of the season going into the season. Cover of Sports Illustrated, a lot of hype. Is this team going to be a super team? Is this team going to take down the big three? All of that was very much on the table. Um, And then with the Lakers, same thing. Steve Nash and Dwight Howard joining the Lakers. That was huge news that season. So when we do run it back sets, we're going to try to tell the narrative of that season. It might lead to instances where players are not necessarily on um, the team they're best known for, um, but we'll, we'll work on it. Sounds great. I don't know if I was, um, if I visibly dropped or if I quietly dropped and rejoined, but my uh, discord connection is pretty, uh, pretty low quality today that's happened to me recently too i don't know in, in my wi-fi you know, humble brag I, i've got the streamers package so i'm um, not gonna not gonna throw my provider under the bus right here but i would anticipate that i should have pretty high quality internet always but it hasn't been the case recently yeah i think i'm i think i'm squarely pointing at discord for uh, for today's issues but uh um I guess a couple, couple other quick questions. Um, could you imagine a, <laughs> for another sarcastic-ish question? Could you imagine a search in the marketplace for LE moments or one that excludes CC moments? Yeah, I think long term for sure that's on the table, um, and I think it, it's a fair kind of question and, and something that people will want to see. Um, I don't have a timeline for it, um, but I would, I would suggest. Um, if it's not already on our forum, uh, suggested here, I'm going to share the link in the office hours chat. Ideas.nbatopshot.com. I am pretty sure we've gotten to the end of most of the questions that I'd gathered before the meeting. Um, cool. It's a good I think riff. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to submit your questions in the channel. I'll take them on. Um, one is challenges are money losers for now. Any chance to have challenges connected to each other are becoming a requirement for pack drops to compensate for losses. No, I, I mean, it's potentially long term. We'll see how long it goes. But I think part of being a collector on Top Shot and, and being a, a savvy collector at that is you know, inferring how many people are going to go for this challenge like me. And I think there's always going to be equilibrium where word got out that challenges were a guaranteed moneymaker. And as a result, everyone started doing challenges, which meant that the rewards were 
far less scarce than they had been initially. And now it's kind of teetering the other way where word got out that challenges are a guaranteed money loser. And now less people are going to do them. And I think there's always going to be that equilibrium. Um, but what I, what I would say with certainty is um, with anything you do on Top Shot, and I'm aware there's a financial component to it, but you should not solely be motivated by the financials. You sh- if you're going for a challenge, that challenge reward should speak to you and you should have some excitement about collecting it, not just collecting it to flip it immediately. Because what's going to happen is you're going to pursue that challenge and it might not have the, the kind of expected value that you were pursuing and you're going to potentially feel like you were ripped off or gypped. But at the end of the day, the challenges are there for anyone who wants to pursue them, but we, were, we recommend you pursue them because you have interest in collecting the challenge, not interest in, in making you know, a flip off of the challenge reward. Um, going to continue riffing here, JP, if that's okay with you, seeing some yep, good questions. Yep. I'm, I'm actually scrolling up in the office hours um, chat just to see if I can come up with any key questions that maybe we, we didn't cover. So go, go for it. Cool. Uh, series one reserve announcement is probably going to come out you know, sometime in the late afternoon Eastern or mid afternoon uh, Pacific. No specific timeline there, but you know, when when it does come out, we'll uh, we'll make sure that Alan um, from our team is in the Discord and and can kind of clarify any questions you have. Um, seeing a good question from Cage Lawyer. Um, when is UFC beta? Uh, no timeline there. Uh, still working on it. Um, when do we hear about S1 moment resolution uh, later this afternoon? And then boxers or briefs? Oh, I'm a boxer brief guy all day. I uh, get the best of both worlds. Um... <laughs> oh, sorry, I just I, I had to acknowledge because you know you, you you don't get to hear the studio audience, but well played, Jacob. Thank you. Um, let's see it. What else we got? How about how about Scrolling? this? I, I yeah. know. I know. It's funny. The uh, the mods are, you know, directing people to state uh, their que- They made some comments, but says please please make it a question. But I'll still allow it. Um, there is a request for us to add some more filters to the marketplace. Things like three point shots, layups, dunks, and blocks. Things you know, in case people want to go after collecting a certain type. So I think uh, just want to acknowledge that. Uh, we we did see the the comment and it's been noted. Yeah, and it's possible long term. Uh, right now, I kind of like the idea of collectors uh, really doing the digging and and putting in the work to to find the moments that they're they're after. But I understand the utility and, and the reason uh, why we would want to you know have that long term as a added filtering. Okay, um, let's see. More questions. Gonna just riff here. Let's see. see if there's a, see if there's anything new coming in because I've scrolled up. There's a. I don't think there's too much we haven't already covered on. Who's the coolest right. person in the NBA world that you've got to meet or talk to as a result of this job, Jacob? Yeah, I replied to that one. Um, was, the only was one of the times I dropped. <laughs> yeah, the only the only person I've ever really truly been like intimidated and, and star studded by was Greg Popovich. Um, just because Greg Popovich is known for being a little terse with the media. And I was like 19 years old in a media scrum trying to get him to answer a question about Aaron Baines, who was like the ninth man on the Spurs. And, you know, he actually gave me a really great answer. And I think Pop just doesn't have patience for the tediousness of answering the same questions every day of like, when is this player going to be healthy and good to go? Like, how did you feel when your team won? You know, the dumb questions that the media does ask at times. So I think when you give him a question about a player that might not get recognized for all that they do, yeah, he kind of lights up and enjoys answering that. Um, But to the community, the the two guys that, yeah, I've spoken to, say every superstar in the league other than Giannis and Luca. Um, 
but you know, uh, back in the day, I was covering the Hawks and the Atlanta media scene was not like the New York media scene. So I was able to get a credential. Spoke to Kobe once, LeBron uh, a few times because he swept the Hawks in the playoffs. Um, and, you know, Steph Curry obviously was thrilled to, to talk to. But um, with all of these guys, you know, chances are they don't remember me. It was more just in the, in the scrum of a, a media session where I am getting a question in or a question or two in. Um, no, it's, it's always dangerous to venture out of basketball into football, as we, as we saw last night. How do you think you would have done with Marshawn Lynch? Uh, he'd just be there not to get fined. So, you know, I, I would keep the question short, make sure that there's nothing really to lose. Cause, uh, yeah, there, there's minimal chance that we're getting, uh, significant answers. Uh, going, going back to some questions here, what will be the next focus of the support team now that the withdrawal approval backlog is reducing? Well, we've still got plenty of work to do there on withdrawal approvals and, and getting people through. But surely, I think just for everyone here's context, we are looking into figuring out ways long term to automate increasing withdrawal limits. Right now, it's a manual process. So the reason why withdrawal limits are not increasing super quickly is because it takes a lot of manual effort. And when we're talking about nearly, I think at this point, I'll, I'll stay tuned for the announcement today on how many more people this week got withdrawal access. But we're, we're well into the mid uh 100 and like last week we're at 132,000 so I, I would guess we're about 150,000 or so at this point that's a lot of people to manually increase so you know based on behavior based on activity we'll be able to increase those limits over time um but that's kind of uh where we're at um am i a ranch or a blue cheese guy oh i hate ranch dressing um and with good reason, but that might be story time for another day. Um, but yeah, definitely team blue cheese, but maybe my hottest take as like a buffalo wing connoisseur is that you don't need either to enjoy your buffalo wing. I, I'm kind of uh, just the wing and, and celery, and, and I'll dip the celery into blue cheese, but not as big on the... Now I feel like I'm wasting everyone's time. I'll get back to top shot questions. That, that's I'm definitely sorry. a hot take for sure. Uh, hey, Jacob, can we, uh, you know, since there's no mysteries on the blockchain, can we talk about or provide anything about Genesis or ultimate uh, moments being in the future or released anytime in the future or the near future, I guess? Um, near future is a stretch. I think we'll look at it. Um, I think it's probably a better question for late summer. Um, or, or maybe early fall, if I had to guess what the what the best, um, what the best guess is around timeline. Um, I see Usman's in the chat. Usman, great to see you. Uh, big ranch dressing stand. I didn't know that we would have had some more conflict if we, when we worked together. If I knew that you're such a big ranch dressing guy, um, but. If there could be one food joint to be added to concessions at MSG, what would it be? You know, I have no complaints about the MSG food scene. They had uh, Fuku, which is David Chang's kind of fast food Korean fried chicken stand. It's excellent. If you if you haven't been to the garden um, when you go, I, you know, I haven't been to the garden this year, but um, that, that's where we're at. Um Okay, Luke, Luke reeling us in with actual questions. Appreciate that. Um, any chance of users being able to change email alerts, particularly for things like turning off failed transactions, failed purchase? Um, we're, we're looking into that actively, um, giving more preference, giving more optionality to our collectors on the types of emails they receive. Um, for something like a failed purchase, failed transaction, I actually think it's kind of important um, for kind of proof and receipt that you, you are receiving it. Um, but it's a fair question. Um, Got to keep it a secret about the chicken sandwiches before the game, Murphy. I'm sorry. I, I can't do it to the player involved. How about rookie of the year badge? Good question there. 
it's something we'll look at for sure. Um, between rookie of the year and, and a variety of other accolades that I'll let the community kind of think about. Um, we're, we're looking into it. I would say with confidence that we're not in a position to add more badges anytime too soon. Uh, we've got too many other things to prioritize, but just like we did with these badges, we can add those badges retroactively. Um, if we do go in that direction, and there's no guarantee that we do. Pretty, it's, there's an open question here, um, just because it's, I guess, relevant to the challenge. What are the what are the requirements for? And they say players, but you know, we ha obviously have non-players. What's what do we consider to be the requirements to be a certified baller? Uh, we have a page uh, with all of the certified ballers. So if they are in that section um on nbatopshot.com and, and more more specifically if you're uh really kind of confused or unsure if you go to the marketplace tab on nbatopshot.com and you click on the new certified ballers pick page that'll take you to all of the moments that are eligible for this contest Now, I know we have a handful of non-player certified ballers. I think maybe the question was more about, do we have, uh, you know, is, is there is there any kind of a, v, or I guess a celebrity criteria that we're, that you consider? To become a certified baller, just in general. Yeah, I think that, I um, think that was the, I think that was the question. Yeah, we have like a, an internal panel of, uh, kind of experts here. So long-term, we might build it out, but right now we're kind of limiting it to just uber celebrities, if you will. So Louis Tomlinson from One Direction, Diplo, um, Lamorne Morris from New Girl and a few other great movies. Um, I think like generally speaking, the thresholds are very high here because we, we know that there are a lot of influencers that have accounts on top shot and we don't really have one person to to um you know focus on adding these people so we kind of do it piecemeal um so we're, we're keeping the threshold really high of just people that everyone knows um or if you don't know them you're missing out Um, see a question from Webhead about uh, those who are using third-party scanners to find the best deals. Um, we are looking into longer-term solutions to handle new listings that are coming in below market value. Uh, we have a few different ideas in the works that we're excited about. We just kind of have to scope it out and, and build it in. Um, all right, we got four more minutes here. Uh, let's see. Uh, we look at we look at third party sites as a, a positive for the user experience overall, for sure. Um, between all of the great tools that help you figure out what your account's looking like and how it's trending to tools that kind of do a deeper analysis of moments and how many have hit the marketplace, how many are still kind of in packs, all of that's helpful. The, I, there was a question that I, I think I might have had on the list at one point, but uh, off-season challenges and other activities that maybe might be planned for the off-season, any comments there? Yeah, um, well, we're going to do, as, as we've said before, uh, we're going to do run it back uh, drops in the off season, and, and we'll figure out other types of drops for the off offseason. Um, and there will absolutely be challenges associated to those. Um, I'm seeing a question. So just to set the record straight to anyone in the community that didn't see my tweet earlier today, um, the players that we were going to stream with later today, unfortunately, um, have been on the road and, and their travel got pushed back last night after their game. 
um, meaning they got into their new city later than anticipated, meaning their practice got pushed back to the time we were supposed to stream, which means we will not um, we will not be streaming with them today, though we're, we're excited to stream with them in, in the near future. Well, what do you think, Jacob? Should we give everybody the two minutes of time back for their lives? Yeah, well, let's see. Why is sale price capped at 250000 The plan is to raise that limit soonish. Uh, there are just some kind of uh, considerations that are, you know, frankly, out of my expertise that have, have kind of kept it at 250000 but we have acknowledged that we will need to raise it and we will raise it soon. When will we see a Knicks player stream? I mean, look, I'm not going to do anything to disrupt their rhythm. They're nine and one in their last 10 games, hottest team in the league. I'm not, I'm not going to distract them from eyes on the prize right now. We're going to win the championship this year. I say it in jest, everyone, don't worry. I don't think we're winning the championship. I only think we're winning the, the conference. I'm kidding again. We're, we're, we're going to be fine. Um, yeah, getting Tibbs in a stream long term would be awesome. <laughs> Just to be clear to the entire community here, I think the Knicks, if they're the four seed, they have a really good shot at beating the Hawks or the Celtics as the five seed. I would say that the Knicks are the fifth best team in the conference after the big three of Brooklyn, Philly, Milwaukee. And then I think Miami is a better team, unfortunately. All right. Um, yeah, next rare drop we're doing is throwdowns. Uh, next common drop we're doing is hustle and show. You can anticipate at least one of those to come out next week. Um, you can anticipate our hope is to do another pre-registration pack next week. Um, and... Overall, just really appreciate you all taking some time out of your Friday. Stay tuned. We will be updating you all about the Series 1 base set moments that we're going to be releasing. Um, and I'm looking forward to kind of having that question put to bed a little bit. Um, but it will be very exciting. Cool. Um, well, thank you all, JP. Excellent job hosting your first one of these. And uh, we'll see you all on Tuesday for our next one. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time and joining us. Take care, everyone. Happy Friday. Bye-bye.